Hail and you're on. Hail Satan! <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chad Rivera. It's nice to be here, as always. Uh, now, unfortunately, I also will not be here next week. I also have to work late. We got fucking parent-teacher conferences next week. So, my Thursday night is just going to be a barrel of fucking laughs. They said ironically. Trust me, I'd much <laughs> rather be here. Well, I have new shit for you tonight. New shit? I'm helping. So Sunday, this is called a Sunday afternoon. Emails are waiting from the boss telling me about exciting seminars that can improve my classroom skills and I can register absolutely free, courtesy of our superintendent. And don't forget, testing season is coming up fast. And did I get trained and certified by the laws of this state? Speaking of training, our instructional coach is available to offer a helping hand. It all seems so important, so vital, and I made a mental note to forget about it. The champ was working over the challenger. He had the arrogant heel twisted up in a sharpshooter. The ref was looking for the tap out. The champ seemed poised to hold on to his belt. I cheered along with my beloved in that exhibition hall with a hundred, with a hundred other fans. The business of being an underpaid mister never seemed less important. Poems I'm in by proxy. Lots of poems. <laughs> Also, if you guys want to watch Cher's performances from the last few years, I, they're posted on YouTube. Yeah, all my live archives are on YouTube. So, speaking of work, here's another one about work. This one's called Priority Blue. Oh, hold on. There we go. Boss lady got time to schedule meetings with all the bells and whistles. Boss lady got time to remind us to keep our borrowed spaces clean. The boss lady got time for conferences where the right people will see her powerful face. But when it comes to all the days that leave us torn and frayed, boss lady got no time at all. It's true, and you should say it. It is true. I did not know. I, say, I am going to say it. But. <laughs> and this one's called uh, Flashback. Oh, here we go. It finally happened, as I feared it would. A couple of kids from work dug up the past. They confronted me with a photo older than they were, from an interview in a magazine long since gone. But there I was again, slash dyed hair and a chest dripping with stage blood. They asked if it was me, and I told no lies. Under better circumstances, I would have told them the story behind that now notorious photo of being 20 and completely mad certain that the grave was just around the corner, and how all I lived for was one more line of verse, one more chance to feel immortal, that beautifully doomed feeling of being so sure I was going to blaze my way into the poetic pantheon. I would have told him the frenzy of those days, how dark they got, and how much I missed them. I would have told him that being a respectable mister was the furthest thing from my mind, how life throws a curve at your hopes and dreams, and all that matters is how well you swing the bat. But how could I? All they cared about was the latest TikTok trends and what the chances were that they could become influencers. The mad beauty of poetry and coffee house nights would be a foreign language to them. And then I got one more original. I'll do a quick cover and then I'm going to shut the hell up. Uh, this one is... Uh, Look, a kitty. She was crying, so that's like the camera oh, got wobbly. Does she have a tag? Or? Oh, yeah. Poor Somebody, kitten. Uh, she must have escaped on accident. Uh, yeah. Uh, guys, uh, may, uh, maybe uh, take her into the green room so that if she gets, so if she gets down from me, she doesn't run off again. Uh, you know, well, we don't, want, we don't want her to stay lost, you know. Yeah, we want her to get home where she goes, where right. she belongs. But, um, <laughs> She's crying. She's lost. She doesn't know where she is. This is a poem I, I had hoped I wouldn't have to write for a long time. But a good friend of mine passed away last weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, it was an old buddy of mine from college. And, uh, oh, shit, I got to see if I can get through this one. It's okay. This one's called Hell on Wheels. 
It was a late Sunday when I got the news that you had cast your check and fled the scene. And I wasn't ready for such a bad jolt of blues. I wasn't ready for that credit rolling screen. We had freaked our way across a dozen headlines in those faded but still talked about olden days. Fueled by cigarettes, loud tunes, and cheap wine, we were tasting immortality with our strange and savage ways. There's something special about when you're angry, young, and poor, when all that matters is the next pint or the next pack of smokes, and all we thought about was when to start the next satirical war, and who to shock with our line-smashing jokes. In that nowhere town, we were almost a myth. Nobody knew what was a gag and what was real, as we materialized out of a Jim Beam fifth. It was more than fact, it was something you had to feel. Oh, but that bastard time moved on and we grew up in a part. Those wild days were too soon gone and we tried to find a new start to our lives, something grown up and respectable. We drifted further and further away, finding our own way to be perfectible as the gonzo colors faded to gray. And now, God damn it, it's too late to have one last round, shut down by the very fates you are now nowhere to be found. Always thought we'd have a chance to patch things up, to feel insane and immortal once again, to drink once more from that fabled cup and light a stogie in the den of sin. All I can say is safe travels, my old long lost friend. I'll keep a seat emblazoned with your name. And for even though this is now the end, I'll never forget our deeds of youth that sparked that flame. And I'm going to do a real brief cover and then see if I'm going to shut the hell up. Sorry, I know I've been up here for a while. But this was one of my favorite poems in college. A professor of mine uh, introduced us to this one. He asked us if we had ever read a verbless poem. Of course, we all said, no, how could you have poetry without verbs? And he said, well, here's one that was written without verbs. This is by Ezra Pound. This is called In a Station of the Metro. The apparition of, those fa of, the, the apparition of these faces in the crowd pedals on a wet black bow. Thank you. Okay.